All right, here we are on to Wix triage number eight on October 24th. Uh, reminder, these are recorded for those people that aren't able to attend in person and want to follow along later. So off to the web to look at our bugs. So we're down to 572, which is actually pretty good. This last Tuesday we, we dropped, I think we dropped out of 600s, right? We got like 30 bugs or 40 bugs closed, or at least yeah. triaged, not closed, triaged, which is pretty cool. And it looks like we only brought two more in here. However, Christopher had a question about 4147, so we'll do that first. Um, this is said that this is still an issue. All right, cool. So... Uh, um, yeah, I guess we need more information. Shall. Assigned to shall. Oh, I don't know who that is, but cool. Um, oh, Sean Hall. Very good. Very good. Works for me in this. Did that, did that, did that. So, yeah, I think we need to mark this bug as, what, untriaged, probably? And uh, send it back for more detail. Unless, Christopher, you have more information you can provide. Um that causes this that doesn't match what Sean Hall uh, hit. If there's anything created, so we have a CS project created in 3.5.3.6.3.7 in TFS. Here, I can unmute you, so that's usually faster. Do you have, if you have audio. Um, in 3.7 it builds fine. So let's go ahead and try to do, if you have audio, that's sometimes faster than doing these things back and forth. Sorry about that. Is that working? Yes. All right. Cool. Hi, hey guys. So uh, over here at Home Depot, um, I don't force developers to go forward since uh, Wix has generally been backwards compatible on the 3.x baseline. Um, I currently have 3.5, 3.6, 3.7 in the development community, 3.7 on the build servers. Um, when I move the build servers to 3.8, projects that previously built fine um, suddenly say that they can't find that interop assembly. Um, I have to go in and update the project and set copy local to true. Um, I see the hit path get added, checks in, and then all of a sudden everything builds fine. So basically I'm seeing some kind of um, default behavior change somewhere in the XML schema in MS builds, somewhere in that area. So Sean, did you try taking a, oh yeah, you created a solution with 3.7 and then you went to 3.8. So is it I'm not a, yeah, so Jacob brings up the point is the 3.8 templates changed. Bob, anything about the 3.8 templates? I, I, I don't know anything about this issue. Bob's done more on the templates than I have, so I'm yeah, just going to here. I didn't touch the, the managed code custom action templates. All right. So I'm not aware, we're not aware of any changes in the 3.8 templates. And so the I'm not, only thing left is the reg key we did set, but we didn't, do did we, oh, when did that go in? I think that was first in 1021. Oh. Uh, but, but it was just an addition. Yeah, right. It didn't change anything. Hmm. Just Is it possible that we have to create the, the... Do we have to create the CS Proj in 3.5 or maybe 3.6 to get this to repro? Probably. All right. So let's go ahead and mark this, or let's reopen. Let's add that and information to it. Um, Chris, since this is your issue, can you add information about um, the 3.5, 3.6, since I don't think that's like the one path we haven't tried here from the looks of it. Um, and then we'll have to try again, because uh, unless, Sean, you tried going from yeah. 3.5 to 3.8. No. All right. Cool. So what he did was in the bug, which is kind of what you would expect. Awesome. If it'll let me paste XML, I can put in like CS proj before and after also. It's markdown, so you should be able to like indent it by four and you'll get, you know, all the good okay. processing, okay. all that kind of stuff. So, and the preview window should show you when you're editing the issue if it looks good or not. Um, so, anyway, that or Bob, oh no, we can't fix issues yet. So, anyway, cool. So, let's open this still in 3.8, Bob. Uh, yeah. Um, All right. Not a lot of time here, huh? Well, the problem is if if a change is required, that would be in the upgrade path in Votive, and that's not a 3.8 issue. Yeah, I don't know what we would have done. I don't know that we even support that. Um, yeah, like, well, I, I do, but the thing it's, is that... It's minimally. 
Yeah, but what would we have... Yeah, I just don't know. Nothing's changed, so why would it work in 3.7 and not 3.8? That seems weird to me. So, yeah. Unless this is a 2013 issue, but there's nothing about that here. Um, so... Um, all right, so it might be interesting also to... It, it's build an MS build using TFS. So, so there's no Visual Studio involved in this then. So... Um, all right, well, let's get a little more information on this. We'll, we need to look at this. Sean, hopefully you'll have some time to maybe try uh, doing this again or, you know, take another shot at it, maybe 3.5, 3.6. Um, so, all right, let's get all the information that's going back and forth in the uh, the comments um, and make sure that we get them uh, put in this thing. And, yeah, Christopher brought up the X64 not being able to resolve the issue, and that is true because we only took that fix recently. The whole X64 thing, that only came in. I'm not even sure that's in a build yet. Um, so, anyway, onward. Onward, onward. Um, Torch doesn't detect changes in binary data files. Um, 3.7 doesn't do this. It worked in 3.5, so I wonder if it works in 3.6. Um, seems like it should, right? Right, Bob. It 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 works for me. Um, oh, interesting. Well, I mean, you know, patching is still something I do pretty regularly. Uh, the the interesting actually, with a binary, so. Yeah, this is one of those we definitely need more data. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll. All right, that's what we need. I'll tag for more data. Um, great. If binary with a if it's like a custom action. Yes, element, that's what it is. Well, uh, it's a J script cust in a binary element. Exactly. And it's like, um, oh gosh. <laughs> but anyway, still, it should pick up the difference in the binary element. Well, then you get back into the, you know, how are you authoring the patch? Or are you using yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. patch family? You know, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I'll I, ask one more data. Yeah. It's possible that, yeah, something greater changed. All right. We have... This has been... Which version of Burn? So they're doing 3.8. Ah, uh, this reopened because they added comments. Mm-hmm. Well, they marked it for on triage, so, I mean, that's fine. So, um, you changed it from 3x to 3.8. Are we going to take this in 3.8? Uh, this was, I put this in 3.8 for an investigation. All right. So, they're hitting it in 3.8. Are, do you want it in 3.8? I don't expect anything changed in here, so I don't think this yeah, is this 3.8 regression. We haven't done I, much. I agreed. Agreed. Nothing. Nothing in the registration stuff changed. So we should try to fix it, but not for three eight. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Onward to. Now we're back into history. Ancient history. Um, Bob, did you want to go through all the open three eight bugs, right now, and see if there are any others that should be triaged away? Um, yeah, I was assuming we'd do that today. We should All right. either Sorry. do that first or do that last. Um, since or we do it in the middle. middle. How about we just do it now? We are now back into the year old bugs, so let's switch over to 3.8 open that works. bugs and make sure that we're happy with the bugs that we're currently in 3.8. Yep. All right, cool. Um, and starting at the top. Um, prepare for RTM. Yes, I need to do this. I'm hoping to do this on Friday. Cool. Um, exception thrown without media tag. Yeah, media with tag. I'm sure there's something wrong in the tag extension that's blowing up. Actually, no, it's uh, in the auto media signer. Oh, lovely. Uh, it's, it's I have a I have a fix. Oh, cool. So will we take it in three <laughs> eight? Yeah. Um, media versus media template compression. Did we track that one down? Uh, this is not repro for me. Oh, well, it may be that we fixed it in three eight because there's yes. something a long time ago that made me think that we actually weren't like paying attention to the compression attribute on media template, and that was just dumb. 
Um, all right, so we have DTF references inclusion behavior change. Uh, Sean, do you want to go ahead and take that, and we'll have that assigned to you, and hopefully you can hunt it down before Drake goes too much further and all that kind this of good stuff? This is what we just talked about. Yes. All right, Sean's going to take it, so that will be assigned to somebody at least. Um, icons for Wix stuff, the guy has the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, assignment agreement um, out to him. Um, hopefully that will come back quickly. I assume that's not a big change or that you'll be able to do that, Bob, to actually bring in the icons. Um, yes, I have to, I, I took a quick look at this. Um, we have, well, first of all, everything's icons instead of pings. I have to see if we can either convert them or, or actually use the pings. Um, and I want to make sure that we have everything. I'm a little reluctant to take um, partial set. Yeah. Um, I th but I think I think all the these are the projects. All right. Uh, so we're projects. not punting this bug right now. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to leave it open. Right. Drop you know dropping in new icons should be you know trivial. Awesome, Bruce. Is this coming in for three eight soonish or should we move it to three X? Your call. I'm so happy you're here today. Um, I know this issue wasn't obvious what's, I mean, it wasn't obvious to fix, although I think we figured out what the root issue problem was. All right, so Bruce is willing to move uh, 4114, so that'll move to 3X. Thank um, you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, Blair's not here. Um, uh, what do you want to do with that one, Bob? I'm, I'm torn. Uh, well, I did the... I added the uh, Win81 GUID win go to the manifest. So that would get so, us a little while longer. Uh, yeah, I'm... Uh, I want to say move this to 3x, uh, right. unless Blair gets it, you know, done. All right. All right. So uh, let's do that, and can we tag it with burn or something like that? Uh, um, yes. All right. Patch bundle uninstalls. That's me. I'm still looking at it. Um, Wix 3.6 requires net 2. Um, what do you want to do, Bob? Are you going to get that block, or what are you going to do? Put a launch condition in? I forgot. Uh, we're going to do a launch condition, um, but we actually don't have launch conditions in Wix BA. No, we don't, which is um, sad, but true. It is both sad and true. Um, <laughs> I I do not particularly want to go poking around in Wix BA. Um, if th this <laughs> this is uh, not quite uh, you know resolution minus zero, this is uh, um, you know, I think we become should more of a do problem. this. Yeah, we really should. It's going to become more of a problem as we roll. But we need we need someone to go, willing to go poke into Wix BA and and add it. Ideally, I'd love to see us you know have have the equivalent of ball condition somewhere in the MBA host or wherever is appropriate. Yeah, it'd be another assembly that you'd use. MBA host isn't the right place. Yeah. Um. But you know, it, it would probably be okay to add it directly into Wix BA. All right, let's leave it in three eight and see what happens. Okay. Because um, it's. It's not good. No, it's not. It's not great. Um, Preproc example extension. Um, yeah, I just have to delete this. All right, you're gonna delete it. Yeah. I'm fixing it right now. No, any. Anyway, all right. Um, well, in four, I'm I'm dealing with lots of the. Ah, uh, right, right, right. In four, and I just passed that thing. I was like, oh, hey, it's not hard. To, anyway, never mind. Um, VS add reference doesn't show Bootstrap or core assembly. Is that the x64 thing or? No, this is. Uh, I, I mark this open on Tuesday to investigate uh, if the path that the uh, this forum posting points to is you know official and whatnot. Uh, I don't see harm in adding it. Oh, the assembly folders. Yeah, apparently there's a new folder. Oh, SP10 has something else as well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, SP10. What the hell Sorry, is that? SP1 of Visual Studio 2010. That thing. Yes. All right, if, fair if this is something we're supposed to be using now, then we should update it. Okay, fair enough. Um, oh, someone needs it to go do the Wixel file. 
let's see if that comes in because that's going to be, I think, relatively straightforward. Can't yeah. define remote payload, and I, you still on the hook for that? Um, yeah, this uh, this was just going to be you yeah. know, tightening up the compiler to right. uh, prohibit. Cool. All right, so we kept almost all of these bugs, I think. Yep. Although they are almost all assigned to somebody except that, the 3872 for the Wix 3.6 requires 2.0, and this very easy bug, 3.786. So if someone wanted an easy bug, they could take that one and make somebody's day. Um, all right, cool. Yes? We need a resolution for that as well. What's that? Uh, tagging. Take... Tagging for... We need, we need a way to tag a bug and say, hey, help needed, help wanted. Well, all the bugs are help wanted. What I, This, to me, is an easy That's bug. That's true. So it's a, I mean, it's just a... We need to get the thing so it makes it easier for people to jump in. All right, yeah. so... <sighs> cool. I just it would be good to see all the three eight bugs assigned to somebody. Mm -hmm. so, all right, cool. All untriaged back. So we did the torch thing, enable thirty two bit applications. We're back to last year. Um yeah, and if you want to take a bug, go ahead, get the enlistment, do the pull request, all that kind of good stuff, assuming you have the assignment agreement. If you don't, let's do that real quick. Although all that kind of good stuff. All right, directory tree is rooted in 64. Package platform is 64. Ordinary components and yes. Oh, all right. This is IS. Didn't we have a bug about this where IS custom actions weren't respecting the 32-bit, 64-bit components? And I think somebody fixed this. Oh, oh. This sounds so familiar. I think I want to say like Blair did work to do this or verify that the work had already been done or something like that. This is open a year ago. Well, we should do this. Um, we should we should take this and we can do this in 3x, I think, right? Seems reasonable. Yeah. Might be a behavior change, but oh, if something goes 64. Uh, n no, you don't need permissions to take bugs. You may just have to refresh the bug. There is a refresh thing due to the way things get cached, Chris. So if you hit refresh, it should go to you. Um, all right, as a workaround, manually setting. Um, uh, would this be a breaking change? Um, maybe it would. That would be a little surprising, wouldn't it? Wait, manually setting Win64 on the component works. Oh, no, okay, then I think, no, okay, no, this, but we could take this in 3x. I, and, because this is what it is. I think if you set Win64 equals yes, it finds it, but it doesn't, the, it's like the extension isn't figuring out that we're compiling for 64 bit and doesn't automatically set it to 64 the way that components do. And if you're going to be, if you're going to be broken with the, with the current behavior, well, without uh, setting with 64 equals yes? Then you would, well, you would set, to get out of it, you'd say win 64 equals no, mark your component as 32-bit, and the right thing would happen. It's basically, I don't think the extension is respecting the whole 64-bit package platform stuff, and it should. I mean, it really should. And so I, I don't think this is a breaking change. Well, it is slightly breaking, but there's an easy way out, which is to mark your stuff that was a 64-bit component because it was being compiled to 64 bit, mark it as 32 bit and have the right thing happen. Sorry, I don't know any of the IAS stuff. Um, are you suggesting that right now the behavior you would get is reasonable? The behavior you get right now, no. The behavior you get right now is very unexpected. You have a 64 bit component and you're getting a 32 bit app pool. That's not what you would expect because you marked the component 64 bit. Okay. Well, by the, you got by default. Right. And, the, and this, now, this now makes more sense to me. Uh, you should track the platform attribute, right? So it's basically, I think the extension is not looking at the fact that it's being, that the, it is implicitly 64-bit, and therefore it should use, it should make this component 64-bit, unless explicitly not 64-bit. It's just, an extension has to handle that back and forth. I happen to be deep in this kind of stuff right now, so... It, it is something that the extension should be handling. It's not. I will take your word for it. And we should we should take it. And yep. yes.
All right, cool. Patch creation error with minor file changes. Wow. Sounds similar. Uh, built to MSI's, MSI's original baseline. However, I use Torch Pyro. Um, this is not a bug. This is a request to go to ask questions on Wix users, right? Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember changing this. So, yeah, um, we we should they should go ask a question on Wix users. And maybe they found a bug, but we need to go talk about it for a little bit. I don't think we're going to figure it out from this. Unfortunately, it's a year old, and they probably f totally forgot about this bug or older. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, this. No, I remember. I remember this bug. Um, we moved this to documentation. Ah. Because. Oh. I mean, obviously, you know, the the basic stuff works. So it's a question of, um, you know, do we need to do more documentation on creating patches? I see. Okay. We probably should add a comment here that says that. Um, all right, so documentation bug then, 3x. Breaking, yeah. That's not going to be a breaking change. OK, carry on. Canceling repair during cache verification. I have not been able to repro this. I've tried in the past. I remember this bug. Um, we should put it in 3x, and maybe someone else can get into it. They have logs attached to the old bug, so. OK. Um, yeah, we'll go back to the bugs at the end. Let's see how far we get, and we'll we'll do questions at the end about old bugs. All right, so, yeah, I remember that bug. That bug bothered, bothered me, because I never could figure out how to make it happen. Anyway, that, and I know that guy, and he's usually pretty good about finding bugs, so. Version number and registry key makes it diff detection difficult. Didn't we fix this, or we did something to address the same issue? Um, yes. And you made this change recently. So I'd say, is this fixed now? This is fixed. All right. Look at that. Allow access to persisted variables from related bundles. Persisted variables. I agree. We should do this. Um, doing so is very challenging because we're going to end up creating this tight binding between our data files, which makes it harder. But I have ideas how to solve this in four. Um, we could take this in. Uh, um, I could see us taking this in four because of things that I think we should do to the the state file in four that we wouldn't do in three. Although we could do it three x pro. Nah, it'd be too. Yeah, the rest of the structure is too big. Um, I, I'd say we put this in four. My personal vote would be that we'd put it in four just because it's going to be bigger. Um, but we could put it in three x maybe. No, you're going to need some interface. No, this is... Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> you're going to need some interface changes to get those variables. Um, so you can say how you want the old ones. Yeah, and Jacob brought up the point about the differences between version differences, and it, it is fragile, and that's actually the big problem. Um, although I'm, I'm looking at a way that we can store our files that are backwards forwards compatible in the future so that that doesn't solve that pro to solve that problem. Um, so, yeah, um, I would vote I, for I, 4X. I, I'll agree with that because I think I know where you're going with 4X. And <laughs> yeah, it I, I it would therefore not, it would be wasted effort. You know, you wouldn't be able to just pull the, the 3X changes into 4. Yeah, I don't know. And it's going to be an interesting change to the interfaces and stuff like that. It's a yeah. cool feature. I mean, it is a feature people want. Yeah, exactly right, Jacob. That there's, yeah. So, so yeah, that I think we should. Um... All right. Uh, f I I vote four. Right, can I? Uh, Bob's kindly now. Anybody else in the the gallery good with four? What do people think, Jacob? Any votes? All right, let's do four. Four it is. Play internal UI property changes. Right, this is the one, I remember this bug, where they want to be able to change the display UI, internal UI property as they're installing, or as the thing is going on. 
like internal UI equals yes when I install with command. Oh, silent mode or passive. Or something. And no. Uh, where is it? I, I, <laughs> hey, look, we have an example of uh, <laughs> minus zero. <laughs> Although I'm... There's so many weird, quirky things with display internal UI that I'm, I just don't get that can't get that excited about this thing. Uh, yeah, the you you need no <laughs> no <laughs> no no. Just move it to a BA if you have that much configuration. Move it to a BA. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, this is. <laughs> When I run with manager, if you're doing a custom BA already, it, it's people wanting to run the they use their MSI for UI when they can and stuff like that. I mean, I get it, I get it, right? You've invested in your MSI UI and you don't want to deal with it all and burn stuff like that. I understand. I'm just it, it's not where I, we're I, going. I don't, I, I don't understand the use case really. Oh. Well, it, to me, it's basically they they have something somewhere that made a decision whether they're going to show the MSI UI or not, whether they need to show the MSI UI or not. Can you, can you do this from? No, you can't change it at the runtime. But at BA can't make a decision at runtime today because it's a property that gets set in the manifest. Yeah, so the engine, the BA can never override. Right. Jacob basically shows that you could put a variable in the show UI, display internal UI, and then evaluate a essentially a, an expression. They want to put an expression instead of a constant. Yeah. Right. They right. require a constant right now. Yeah. I, if anything, this would be something the BA could control. Well, you could make that yes, no, a you know, an expression instead of a yeah, yeah. constant is what we force it right now. And then the BA would have to evaluate that condition at uh, probably during planning. Um, no, it have to be during planning. And, yeah. Uh, and it would have to override it for, yeah, anyway. It's possible. It could be done. This is minus zero in my book. This is. I agree with that. Yeah, then Jacob just went nuts. So, all right, fine. See, we, we came up with an example of that thing we were trying to talk about before. Um, where you change the decisions. All right. Um, and this could be done in 3x. It would not be a breaking change. Yep. All right. Light uses cache calves when it should rebuild them. Well, that's not good. Where the source files differ, but were created at the same time. Ooh. Also check the source file names and if it checks on the file size. I, I thought we'd get file size. Maybe we do. Hey. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I agree. We could, yeah. I, seems completely reasonable to me, and this would be a reasonable 3x bug. I agree. Yeah. Multiple dead links on install. Yes, we still have that. I don't know if the URLs are correct anymore, but I'm sure that this page is still wrong. So, do we need this bug for those things? I, we are, no, we already have a bug on this page, don't we? Yes. I'm sure we do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Burn package should handle detect condition. Yes, this is an awesome feature. Thank you. Oh yeah, right. Um, I want to do this feature. I just don't know when I'm going to have time. So yeah, we should do this. Um, do it in 3x. It would not be breaking. It would be additive. Yep. It would be freaking cool to have that feature. Just haven't done it yet. There's all kinds of more things besides tech condition. You could do the whole um, reference counting stuff too, which would be it's hard to get right. So it'd be awesome if it just did it for you. Yep. I think that's when I first came up with the idea. I really needed that. Anyway, Pyro version different switch building DLLs creates not identical byte to byte binaries. Hmm. Check sums and all that. The results files being same versions, yes, yeah, uh, sure. Someone could write something that filters out that information, I suppose. 
right? Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. We can tell at the time. I mean, currently files. I'm kind of surprised that rebuilding a DLL will create the exact same DLL except for that information. But if so, that's pretty cool. Well, guess, you know, the linker is yeah, always see, perfect. I mean, it, they, they say it is, so I'm like, that's pretty cool. I've never. This tried. would have to be. This would have to be absolutely opt-in because I, I, I can see. Yeah, it's gonna exactly. Yeah, PE header. Um, well, uh, is going to change. Headers, though, but like the rest of the DLL is exactly the same. That's pretty cool. I, I guess. I mean, if they keep running the same code, it should keep going with the same DLL, I presume. All right. Anyway, yeah, sure. So I, I think it's a completely reasonable feature if someone wanted to add it. I mean, that'd be cool. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just... Blah, blah, blah. I, I'm wondering if it should be an opt-in thing. Uh, they say it is. You're saying it should be automatic? No, if no. You find a PA header? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. The, the request is actually asking for a switch. Yes, that's what I'm. I'm saying it probably should have. Fine. I'm. I'm have switch. Again, I'm down with it. If someone wants yeah, to write it, it, it'd be good. It'd be cool. Onward. Can't build when platform is x64. Oh, this freaking meth. I'm sorry, meth. See, I keep doing that. This MPF stuff. Yeah. Yeah, this bug has existed for a very long time, and they are right. We should. I wish something would fix it. So yes, three X. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I agree. We should totally fix that votive problem. I don't know how much work it is, but it's not going to be fun. Docs say uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Bob. Um, so yeah, the doc needs fixing, and Bob said that he was probably smoking something that day to make that happen. What? I didn't say I was doing it. Uh, no, I just insinuated that. Um, yes. <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, that. Um, doc bugs. Yeah, I agree. Three <laughs> X. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, unclear if name attribute is required in remove file tag. Really? As required, does not, if you do not specify it, it's not found, cannot be an empty, if I specify an empty value, well, yeah, that's not going to be right. Oh, it's marked correctly in 3x. The error message should explain that this is a required and non-nullable. Well, required, that's what required means, but okay. Yeah. So. Oh, I see, I see. So they're complaining about error six, which is a generic message saying that if you want to specify a null value, remove the attribute. Right, then, which then it turns out and says, well, you have to specify the attribute, which means you can't specify. It's, all right, so it's two steps to the thing that says you're required. Yeah, we've had this bug before. I, uh, I want to say I fixed it. Oh, yeah, you might have fixed the error. The, did you fix the message? I remember you did something about the message because it is kind of annoying that you have to go through two steps to. Yeah, this I fixed this. All right, um, cool. The value is not required. Yes. Yeah, all right, J J Jacob. We know it was like, yeah, it was broken 2x. The, the question was, we keep getting complaints about this error, this candle 006 error message, and we should, if it keeps coming up, we should address it. And it, and Bob's one step ahead of us already. He has done so. So, yay. Look, this bug is uh, fixed in 3x, and we're not fixing the 2o doc. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, please. More flexible standard UI customization. It'd be great to have the same with MSI dialogs. Yeah, I I agree, dude. Can we just close this and go, please, <laughs> jeepers? Yes, um, we should totally do this feature, and this is a ginormous feature. Yeah, this is not actionable. No. So I, I say it's like, yeah, can we just make this one go away? Um, I, I, I guess this is minus zero, except that I really would like it to happen, but it's a huge amount of work. Well... No, I, I want to close it because this really is not an actionable bug. Fine. I'm it's, fine with it's that. It's like, you know, come on. 
let's let's have some detail about what you're looking for to well, say, oh, is. just make it. Well, make it exactly like Foo it, is not. Well, no, it's just huge. Yeah, this is a huge feature. It's a. It would be awesome if we had a flexible UI, native UI. I bet people would love to have a flexible native UI thing and all Absolutely. that kind of stuff. So it's just. I, anyway, it's just frustrating. Yes, I'd love to, but it's a little bit oversimplifying the problem. Just a bit. Um, add the ability to extract embedded packages from bundles. Oh, oh yeah. Well, we have Dark for that. I don't. Do we really need to pull? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't really want to put this feature in bundles. I still don't want to put this feature in bundles. If you really have to take a bundle apart, use Dark. I don't, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to carry it if it's going to, you know, bloat the BA or the engine. The BA, yeah, the engine. It's just, it's not a. So yeah, there's there's a scenario about users trying to extract things from bundles, and there's no end user uh, end user scenario that they should be extracting things from bundles. We don't have that user scenario. Like, we don't. It's not why you ship with a bundle. not why you ship with a bundle. If you want to ship that, if you want to ship the individual packages, ship the packages. Right, so if you use SCM and break things out, then that's fine. Ship the packages. That's what you want. You don't want the bundle. The bundle is going to add a whole bunch of identity and stuff like that. The bundle well, is the thing. Not It's not a random container. Good point. What about uh, <laughs> if, if, well, so it's also it's a useful delivery mechanism as well. The bundle uh, is a useful delivery mechanism. A compressed bundle. That's the. I mean, there's a difference between the bundle and the compressed bundle. I you know agree with everything you said about the bundle identity, but it's really handy uh, to be able to deliver a compressed bundle. Um, yeah, but but if you're delivering it as a compressed bundle, then it's going to be. It's a it's the bundle. It means it has the identity. It's going to have all the stuff that goes around the bundle. It has all the caching and all that kind of stuff. If you want to deliver an enterprise deployment of you know MSI so that you can do GPO and all that kind of stuff, and you don't want to to use the bundle, which Grand XCs through GPO is really not great. But if you want to ship the MSIs, then ship the MSIs to those customers. It's not a bundle. I agree, except it's a handy container. In other words. Handy. It, it's a handy container. If you can deliver one thing that suffices both as a bundle and as a self-extractor for your GPO deployable MSIs. Yeah, to, to me that's like, go back to the vendor and tell them they need to give you MSI packages. Because they gave and you a bundle. The bundle could have tremendous amounts of light. Like you can't take, for example, the um, Visual Studio 130 packages and deploy those through GPO. It won't work. I, I'm, I'm suggesting that it's a simplification for the ISV to be able to deliver one thing rather than having to deliver two different things. Uh, that's fair. That is true. I agree with that statement. It is a simplification so, for the ISV. So where I'm going is, is there a way to do this in, in a BA so that if someone needs this feature, it's doable? Right now, I think the answer is no. Yeah, because we're going to get it, – it has to be opt-in because there are a lot of bundles that should, would, like, you can't do that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I'm saying it should go into a BA and not necessarily work standard BA. Well, yeah, yeah. it's not with standard BA. Nobody knows how to find it, it seems. But um, I, I just – I'm I, – it's not the right. Yeah, it it goes against what bundles are, and you almost want to ship a separate package for the other thing. Uh, I don't disagree. I'm just saying, you know, a compressed bundle is, to some extent, a zip file. So, being able to extract it is is good. Now, I would also, you know. I'm comfortable saying you can repackage dark. Um, 
yeah, that's, except see, but that's not right either because if you use dark, essentially you 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 know you broke open the <laughs> you broke open the casing and you started futzing with the internal details. You you voided your warranty. Um, yeah, absolutely. Again, I'm just saying the I for for an ISV being able to deliver something other than two complete sets of installers is a is a feature. It's, yeah, fair. <sighs> and again, tech, you know, technically, a bundle, a compressed bundle, is a container. So being able being able to open the container is not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, there are you know honestly, now I think about it, there are probably other tools that will shred the thing too, because like Seven Zip is very good at finding embedded cabinets and pulling yeah, sure. all the stuff out of it. You probably get to use that to take the whole thing apart too. Yep. Which at that point then is much more along the lines of what you're doing. You're taking it apart. Uh, I, I noticed like today, um, uh, SQL Server Data Tools mm -hmm. delivers. Uh, they they have deployment instructions, and what they ship is a web bundle, right? So it's just just the engine. Yep. And they say, run it. Number one, run it. Number two, if you want to create an admin install point, run slash layout. And three, oh, here's an ISO. Um, if you were yeah. using a Microsoft bundle, still ships ISOs a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, I so I, I did this. Originally, I wanted to do this on a former product. It's like, let's have one thing that we deliver and it will cover both scenarios if we could extract the embedded packages. Um, but we couldn't, so we changed plans. Um, I mean, obviously, with a bundle, at the end of the day, if you're going to say, here's the MSIs, you're going to have to provide instructions. Right. And that's, you know, that's all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, Mm, it's not a bad thing for someone to be able to do. I definitely don't want to bloat the engine to do it. But well, I think you can't. You can't. Do. You can't do this without changing the engine. We have to change the engine, but I mean, you have to add functionality. Yeah, but it's going to be it's going to be small because the engine already knows how to extract the packages and cache them. So. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to have to go through the layout path or something like that to get it. It's, you're probably going to have to create, you actually probably have to create another action independent of layout. Sure. Like layout, but different, which is going to be annoying, but yeah. Given given the way that layout works through burn, it's kind of annoying as it is. It's just, here's a special one, and then all the other ones behave the same. So it would be, here's the special two, and then here's all these other ones. Well, remember the force switch. Yeah, but the force switch was straight forward. Well, yeah. The only reason um, it, it, what, it went in that late was because you could put it in and just override the uninstalls of all the packages, the condition I'm saying, evaluation. I'm just saying, we have plenty of special switches. Yes. So this would not be a, well, yeah. The question, yeah, then would this be a standard thing on a bundle? The dash extract, so that you'd have a standard action, even if you don't support it all the time? Uh, like, slash layout works because it passes through with standard BA. With standard BA, it doesn't do anything with actions, so it's really straightforward. It just goes straight through. Slash extract would be the same. All right, well, now we're getting to the design of it. Right, right, right. Um, uh, I, I'm, I, I, this is a big enough change. It's not something for 3x. Um, it's, you know, not, not a high priority thing. Uh, you know, probably falls into just above meh as something someone could work on. And Jake is bringing up that it could be a switch to slash layout to extract the embedded ones in addition. Um, yeah, but slash layout, so slash layout is designed to give you a DVD 
for things that are web-based because sometimes you can't all you can't be connected. That scenario is real. The and extract the embedded resources is not correct because burn isn't going to use the embedded resources. It's going to ignore that. So in the end, you don't with slash extract. You don't want the bundle exe copy, right? Because right? it doesn't make any sense. You want just the packages copied. Correct. So it's it's not slash layout and extract the embedded resources. Because if you did that and you set the bundle there, you would end up with this duplication of junk. And and it's not the right presentation for what a bundle is. You definitely need a new switch. Yeah, and, and it behaves differently. It it will do it will get the packages the way layout does, but it won't copy it shouldn't copy the bundle and it shouldn't and it should obviously lay out more packages than it would have um, otherwise. Yep. Like and unlike layout, it has to go into containers and it has to pull all the packages out of the containers and then throw the containers away because you don't want the containers in the extract image either because those don't provide any value. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's this is not layout. It's different than layout. It's a different feature than layout. It behaves different. <sighs> I don't like this feature. I know what people want, but if you're taking things apart, use dark and accept that you avoided the package, <laughs> packaging, <laughs> the bundling. All right, well, fine. We can put it in 4x, I guess, and we'll see if someone wants to step up and walk them their way through all of the, the facets of this feature. It's that not works. A, it's not just layout. I agree. I think it's a whole other action, which then means that grows too. All right. Um, let's do a couple more, just because we can. Um, and then we're going to go back to, I forgot what bug they wanted. There's a bug that we need to go back and revisit. Um, Wix standard boost app application for enter install folder some check like instead of it oh yeah so someone's asking for the check install folder custom action right yes it's a completely reasonable feature request I agree 3x even could be done Wix bundle manufacturer really oh they want that Oh. Do we not provide Wix Bundle Manufacturer today? I thought we did. Yeah, that's no, sad. We have Wix Bundle name. Oh, yeah. We don't have Manufacturer in there? That'd we be... do. Oh, good. Solved. Next. That was easy. Website ID cannot be set to hash. Of IS. Oh yeah, I remember this bug. Yeah, we should fix this. This is totally an awesome feature that we should do at some point. Um, it's a new IS7 thing where they hash the IDs and something like that. And it would be great if we followed along. All right, cool. We got ourselves a couple extra bugs there at the end. Um, I don't know how many we got through. Not nearly as many as before because we spent our whole time talking about extract packages. All right, what was that bug number that we need to go back? Is that that was in three eight? Open, I think. Does anybody remember the number? Going back, going back. Three seven eight six. Three seven eight six. issues. Three seven eight six. Uh, yes, right. What's the question? Sign to. That. Uh, it's a duplicate hotkey, so the fix will be to find another letter that doesn't cause duplication. This is the problem when we send stuff off to localizers. Sometimes yeah. they, because the, the Microsoft guys are nice enough to localize a lot of our UI, and sometimes localizers don't catch the fact that they double use a letter as the hotkey. So it's a matter of pick a new one. All right, I think we'll call it a day. Um, that was one of the more exciting triages we've had in a long time where we actually got to a feature where it's like all over the place. Um, all right, so uh, we will be on for next Tuesday, I think, since we made so much progress. I want to go back and see how many issues did we get through. Um, what do we have left? 
20. Yeah, we're a lot lower that time. But oh, wait, wait here. Um, one. All right. So there's only one left open. 5:52. Yeah, we didn't make as good progress. All right. Well, we'll go Tuesday. Um, anyway, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is for you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye now.